One, two. Always dramatic, right? Sometimes subdued. Hit him! Little Mike coming at you in the bunker on a Tuesday. Can you believe it? Afternoon, let me take that sweatshirt off. What have I been doing today? Not much, not much. Just taking care of family, chilling out, relaxing, listening to Howard Stern. I listened to him this morning. He did an amazing interview with Tracy Morgan. Holy shit, humbling. You know, he was really hurt bad in that car accident. Uh, geez, almost two years ago, I think. And I uh, lost a lot of good friends in the accident. Uh, very touching interview. Check it out if you can find it. So, what am I doing? I'm in the bunker, as always, right? That's where we shoot these things. This is where we rock and roll. And what did I do today? I did do one thing. Uh, I hunted down on Craigslist. A guy was selling a reproduction German Elite SS dagger. Now, a real German dagger, Elite SS, can basically run anywhere. It's going to run a guy between $1,500 and, geez, up to $10,000, depending on, you know, where it falls on the, on the scale. But relatively a, a basic German SS, original German World War II dagger, in very nice condition. A typical one sells for about $3,500. Of course, going down to fifteen dollars low end, high end. The ceiling on that. There, it, there is no ceiling. It, it could be just a million, not a million, I don't know. A lot of money! Hey now! We're not talking about that. We're talking about a reproduction SS dagger. And you say, well Mike, why the F would you buy a reproduction German SS dagger? Here's what I'm going to tell you about this dagger. This is kind of an interesting piece, and I'm going to show it to you, of course. I'm not just going to talk about it. But we're going to start off talking. And uh, it's an SS Elite Dagger. I've seen one before. Probably the last time I seen one was easily, geez, 14 to 13 years ago, give or take. But roughly about that long ago it's been since I've seen one pop up locally here. Uh, very well done. This is an early one. I want to say era 70s, 80s. Could be a little earlier, but I really want to put it in that window, 1970s, 1980s. But very, very well done. The new ones that are out there have plastic handles. They're from China. The blades are just shit. Not that this one is fantastic. But this is a really nice reproduction German SS dagger. And as hard as it is to believe, there is a market for the high-end reproduction German SS items and uh, German World War II items and World War I high-end reproductions. Now, you're talking about an era from 1950 to 1980 really is the window when a lot of this stuff was made. It was sold out of the back of gun magazines, comic books. <clears throat> In those days, um, a Nazi flag or an SS dagger really wasn't, it, 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 it really wasn't, except by a few idiots that ruined it, looked upon as a racist thing. It was more of a rebel, biker type of uh, bad guy kind of uh, rebel dude. That's really all it was. I mean, skateboarders used it as their symbol. Um, surfers used it. Surfers would wear an iron cross and a German helmet, and you would paint the helmet silver. Even the hippies wore them. They would paint flowers on them and shit, and they would go through their, uh, uh, their marches and their whatever the hell that they did. But whatever. Let's wrap it back around. Let's take a look at this, huh? It's very well done. And we'll go over some of the very, very easy, quick ways to see that it's a fake. Now you say, well, what makes it well done, Mike? Well, it's this wood handle, number one. And the hardware here is really nice, chrome-plated, and there's a lot of weight to it. The scabbard is amazingly well done. I mean, right down to the pitting. I mean, this is really an amazing reproduction. Now, right off the bat, the easiest ways to spot this is obviously the eagle, the swastika is backwards, and the SS ruins. The original uh, SS ruins is an enamel button. This is not. This is just basically chrome and black. So, let's take a look at the blade once. <clears throat> Now, on a real dagger, you wouldn't want to touch the blade at all, but with this, I'm really not too worried about it, even though I should be, I guess. So, it really is well done as far as the etching, and even with the RZM, that's a Maker and M736, but there's no edge to it. It's blunt as can be. 
and you know a lot of people think sometimes that they would use actual real SS daggers and, and parts in putting this together. Why is it sought after? Because it's a really high-end reproduction. Now what a guy could do, and I'm not that guy, but I know it happens out there, uh, to rip people off with, I guess, what you would do. And I'm not teaching you how to do it, I'm just saying that this is what you would have to watch for. If you were to see a blade come up like this, there's some telltale signs. Number one, if the eagle is gone, and the ruin is gone. If those two pieces are gone, and you take, uh, you take this horrible hanger off. This is nothing like an original. This is so. This is probably the worst part of it. But even it shows its age and patina. Isn't that something? Anyway, uh, so you have to watch out. These would be screws in here. But man, the weight, everything about it feels right, other than these two pieces right here. But these grooves here, if you'll notice. right there. The real ones, actually there's an edge that comes off right there, so these come over it. They come over the edge and down a notch, so you can see them a little bit. They don't on this, it's just straight across, it's just buzzed in there. I paid 50 bucks for it. Um, it's got some value. I'm actually going to email a guy that uh, deals in high-end Third Reich items, and I'm going to ask him to let me know about it and what the real value of it is. I really expect that the value on this piece is anywhere between hmm, two and three hundred bucks. You know? I like it though because it looks cool as shit and it's not an original so I don't have to worry about it. I can have it hanging on the wall. Good eye candy. And I actually will flip it someday in my older years. So, if you saw my last video Hopefully I'm on camera. Let's see if we can line this up just right, huh? All right, there we are. Okay, so if you watched my last video I did the other night, it was basically me digging through a trinket box. And I came across a picture in there of Caroline. If you didn't, whatever the case. I came across a picture of Caroline. And she was an old client of mine back when I was in the business. And I did estate cleanouts and stuff for a living. and. Uh, Long story short, I found her picture the other night and uh, reminisced a little bit on video about her and then boom, her son called me uh, the next day and he wants me to handle her estate and go over there and see if there's anything that I'm interested in or if I can give them some ideas on how to get rid of everything. So um, I told him today, I spoke with him, I said, listen, what we can do is we can meet and I can give you three options. You know, I really feel I can give you three options of how we can handle it. I'm going to basically do a barter situation. I'll offer that. I'll say basically you rent the dumpster. I have to see what's there, you know, how much rubbish there is. And uh, I'm going to help them out, you know. If I think that they should have a garage sale, I'll do that. Otherwise, I'm going to say let's rent the dumpster and throw everything out. And um, I'll help you with it. And this is what I want for it. If, if there's even anything there that I'll want. Because... He did tell me that the grandkids have been over there and that the family has been over there and have already picked through it, so that sucks because I know that that violin is probably gone. I know that the old accordion is probably gone. I know where all this stuff is is because I knew her well. We used to always talk and I would go over there and pick back in the day, but uh, there could be some amazing pieces there. There's an amazing uh, mid-century uh, chair and uh, couch in the country and western style themed couch in the basement that are in immaculate condition. And there's some old artwork, I know that. There could be some hidden treasures I don't know about. But uh, amazing fun and just basically how crazy life is. That, you know, I met her probably 2000, 2003, right in that window and did work for her years ago and she just always kept my card. And then uh, they were going to put her in the senior home a couple months ago and the son called me. And I was set up to go over there and take a look. And then, boom, she passed away right after her birthday. And then I had not heard from him. And then when I was digging through the box the other night, I came upon her picture, which I filmed and spoke of her a little bit. And a nice rest in peace for her. And, boom, the son calls me the other day. So it's always you wonder in life, does anything mean anything? It makes you question everything. It's so crazy because that night after I filmed, I thought, shit, wouldn't it be crazy if her son called me 
just a sign was finding that picture and then it really happened the next day. So you never know, who knows what really goes on out there, or how much fate is involved and uh, wow, life is crazy man, you know, if it's a vicious circle and I'm coming full circle so make friends, make connections, you never know when it's going to kick back to you somehow. Uh, work with people. Um, try to develop a business relationship with people that bring you stuff if you're a business and you're in the junk business, you know, and you got guys that'll bring you stuff, you know, buy their shitty stuff a lot of the time. Don't overpay them, but give them a little something to keep their, uh, their, their wheels oiled so they can keep out picking for you because eventually they, they're going to bring you something really cool. Hey now, Metal Mike! Always haunting, always picking, always overemphasizing everything, but why not? It's my life. This is what I fucking love to do. I love to talk to you. And if I, you can take anything from it, if I can stir anything up in you, no matter what it is, positive, negative, whatever, something, right? We're all ticking. We're all alive. Another day above ground. Let's do it. Hey now! Go out there. Find it, man. Find me some treasure. I need a German helmet. I need a German helmet. I need a German a bayonet. I need a butcher bayonet, sawtooth. I need a German steel helmet with the liner. I need a Japanese World War II helmet. Man, I got some really cool shit I'll trade for these items. I need iron crosses all the time. I love a German iron cross. Second class, first class, uh, a spange, uh, a German cross in silver, a German cross in gold. I would love to work something out if anyone's got any of that. Bring it on to me. What do I got in return? I don't know. I got skateboards. I got steel press toys. I got something I can trade you. Barter. Let's make a deal, man. Let's do it old school. Let's go down to the cabin and make a trade. Let's do it. Hey now!